I thought it was a brilliant move on behalf of Benjamin Netanyahu to get back to power by promising the far right a bigger say in the government. But I realized that if you're Palestinian now, there's no hope for you. I'm Imran Khan, senior correspondent for Al Jazeera. Between us, this far right government, frankly, should be alarming the world. I've never seen a more openly hostile government in the 20 years I've been reporting from here. Let's take Itamir Ben Gavira. He is the National Security Minister. He has been convicted of racism towards Palestinians, towards the Arabs. He's openly racist. He's now in charge of the police force. That was the first big concession that he got from Benjamin Netanyahu. He said, I'll back you, but you need to give me significant power. And the fact that we are now talking about him more than we are Netanyahu shows you where the balance of power has actually shifted. You're hearing two sets of voices, really. The first one is coming from, I would like to say, kind of liberal Israelis. They say, you know what, at least the mask is off now. At least we're an open right-wing society. At least we can deal with that. For the rest of the population that backs a lot of these settler movements, a lot of these far-right parties, their voice is very simple. They have always said that the land of Israel is theirs. Within the middle, you have people who are trying to just find a space for themselves within Israeli society. A lot of these people, you have to say, are just kind of more interested in the economics of Israel than any kind of peace with Palestine. No one's talking about a Palestinian state anymore. On the right wing of the Israeli parties, you're hearing people say, the occupation is now permanent. And that's something that was always kind of dismissed when it was said out loud, but now people are taking that seriously. We're always trying to look for honesty, and constantly we're up against people who are barefaced liars. And now those lies seem to have disappeared and people are just being completely honest and open with what they would like, which is, you know, the Palestinians out of Palestine completely. The next set of things that people are talking to me about are actually frightening. They're talking to me about a kind of a rollback of human rights uh, within Israel itself. No negotiations with the Palestinians, increasingly tough measures against uh, the Palestinians, including arrests, including cracking down on NGOs and humanitarian aid organizations. It's a very bleak picture that I'm painting, but it's a reality. For the Palestinians, there's no partner that they can speak to. Uh, relations between the Palestinians and the Israelis are at an all-time low. Palestinians once again feel like they have no one representing them, and the international community, it, you know, they feel, continues to back Israel despite all of this inflammatory language this Israeli government is using. Yes, there is security cooperation. Yes, there are a number of agreements, but even those things are now fraught. And also, you've got the siege of Gaza. It's led by Israel. So far, everybody's kept a cool head. There has been no escalation, but that could change within the blink of an eye. I know, for example, that any microaggressions that turn into bigger aggressions against the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound or against the Gaza Strip or in the occupied West Bank are going to lead to violence. The only hope um, is the hope that we've seen since I've been covering Israel-Palestine the last 20 years, is the resilience of the Palestinians to get up every morning and still campaign, still dream of a Palestinian state, still uh, deal with the occupation here, still deal with all the harassment that they get every single day. They deal with that, they get up. There's still people who are confident that one day things will change.